the case. So in Numbers 35, look at verse number 11, the Bible says, Then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. So they're saying he needs to have his fair shot. So you can't just allow him to be killed by the person who's going to execute the judgment upon him until it's determined that he really is guilty and worthy of death. Now, we're going to get into that uh, about the avenger of blood later in the sermon and, and kind of go into all the details about that. But that is the person who would rightfully kill if he's determined to be a murderer, he would kill a murderer. Okay. But if this guy isn't a murderer because he, it was an accident, then uh, he doesn't deserve to die, according to Scripture. And we'll get into that also. So the whole point of the city of refuge is just a safe place. He's going to go there until he's able to stand before the congregation in judgment. And the way that this works also is that he stands before the congregation in the city he came out from, which is another concept in our legal you know, you're supposed to be judged by a jury of your peers, right? That's the way that the United States works, is supposed to work, with, uh, with having a jury, a, a, a trial by jury. And I'm not going to get into all the reasons why I think, you know, our legal system is screwed up. You can figure that out for yourself, okay? Uh, um, it's pretty obvious, you know, the, the, all the guarantees and the rights that were supposed to be enshrined in our you know, founding documents of the country and stuff have all been eroded away and, and we're losing more and more. But even just a, you know, a speedy trial, a, you know, a fair trial or trial at all, now there's many crimes you don't even get a trial and you should be guaranteed that. In any case, um, the concept of a trial and, and having people judge you also comes from Scripture because here this person is going to stand before the congregation in judgment. A congregation is going to be a group of people. Now, in our country, it's whittled down to, say, 12 jurors, which would be like representative of the whole congregation. That's, that's the way that it's formed here. I can't say that. I don't think that that's exactly the way it was, that the way God envisioned it when they're standing before, because it says they're standing before the congregation in judgment. I don't think it's an elected representative congregation. I think it's literally the congregation. I think the congregation, whoever comes together at these public hearings would be the ones kind of standing, they standing in judgment of. So um, let's move on to, look, jump down to verse number 26 here. Part of the problem with dealing, I'm trying to keep these, these concepts separated but they, they flow together. So I'm going to try to keep this um, as separate as I can. Verse number 26 in Numbers 35. Again, we're still just dealing with the city of refuge itself. Uh, it says in verse 26, But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So what we're learning in Numbers 35 is that if it's, this is already after a judgment that or even before, I guess it doesn't matter if it's before or after, if he's, if he's gone to the city for refuge, for asylum, to protect him against this avenger of blood who's going to kill him, what it's saying is that you have to stay there. These cities are designed for that purpose. And it's well known. And here's your boundaries. And you have to stay within that city. And if you've killed, even if it's by accident, if you kill someone, you still are, are going to receive a punishment. And in a sense is that you have to stay there for a certain period of time. And if you decide to just say, well whatever, I'm just going to go out and, and travel over here or go visit my family where I came from. And the revenger of blood finds you and kills you, then he's going to be guiltless. And it's your fault. It's what the Bible's saying. It's just like, well, you, sh you shouldn't have left. You say, yeah, but it was already determined it was an accident. Yeah, but it's your city of refuge. That is your safe place. You stay there, and, you, and you know, according to law, you'll be guaranteed to be safe there. Not everywhere you go. You need to stay in that city of refuge. 
That's the way that God's law determined us to be. Now, there's a lot of reasons why that makes sense. And the Bible doesn't spell out for us all of the reasons why that makes sense. But if you just think about it, I mean, if you were to lose a family member, they get killed. And yeah, it was an accident. But just the fact that you lose someone, it's going to cause a lot of emotion. You're going to be sad. You're going to be upset. You could be very angry at the person that caused it. You know, in, in our system of, of governance, our laws, there is a difference between a slayer, which we call a man, you know, manslaughter, and a murderer. But they both carry punishments. They both carry sentences. Just because you didn't intentionally do it, it still happened. And you're still, to some degree, responsible for that. So here you might have, you know, you have civil lawsuits and criminal lawsuits, which the Bible doesn't really have. That's all just kind of one thing, right? But you can, find, you can be free of murder in the United States, but then still be convicted of, of uh, not convicted, but, but charged with or, or held responsible, financially responsible for the death of someone else, right? Um, but let's dig into the, the difference between a slayer and a murderer. And this is really important concept to understand, especially you, you get a lot of people out there who misapply scripture as I brought up already once. And one of the most common things that I've seen is people who want to say that there's contradictions in the Bible at the most basic level when they say, oh, well, the Bible says thou shalt not kill. But you're saying that, you know, certain people should be put to death. Well, isn't that a contradiction? Because if the Bible says you shouldn't kill, but then it says, hey, if someone rapes someone, they should be put to death, then how is that not a contradiction? Right? That's, that's what people will say. And the reason they say it is because they don't understand, well, one, they're just not using common sense, first of all. They're not using common sense. But when the Bible says kill, it's not just referring to the loss of a life. This is thou shalt not kill. It's talking about murder. And that's evident. And I'm not going to go through every single instant. You can look up the word kill. You can look up the context of all this stuff. But anyone with half of a brain can understand that that's what it's talking about. You're talking about aggressing against people as far as stealing, mur you know, murder from them, you know, lying about them, whatever. All these different things you, know, you find in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. It's referring to murder. And that's why you have in the extent, you know, you can't just pick one verse out without all of the underlying explanations. I mean, look at these, these chapters are dedicated, these three chapters that we're going to be looking at tonight, that we are looking at tonight, are dedicated to just giving you all of the information in, in spelling out special cases and identifying what the differences are. Because there are differences between someone who accidentally kills someone and someone who is a murderer.